hey, you're on YouTube and the video is formatted horizontally, which means that this is probably some more of my YouTube exclusive content. YouTube exclusive content. All right, at the time I'm recording this video, there are still a few days left in the month of June. I don't know if I'm going to finish editing this video by the end of June. I'm going to try to, but either way, it's still June while you're watching this, or it was just June, or it's like several months from June because you're watching this way down the road or even several years in the future. I don't know, but whatever. Happy Pride Month to you. I hope you had a good one. I hope it was really gay. And I hope you did a lot of gay and gender non-conforming things. And I hope you had a lot of opportunities to shove those things down the throats of bigots. <laughs> and that's something I'd kind of just like to talk about is like, I really just wish that conservative people who are mad about things like Pride Month would just get like some new lines get some new material i swear it always sounds like they're reading from a script that was written by someone going into chat gpt and just being like write me a monologue that a stereotypical conservative person would say after they see a pride flag at a store my whole life people have been using that shove it down my throat thing that whole keep it to yourself i just don't want to see it stop shoving it down my throat thing I feel like if I don't get to do this, I, I, I feel like that's it. Like I might, I might, like I, I might die. I made a video over a year ago on TikTok where I talked about how I don't want to engage in the debate anymore over whether or not we should like be nice to queer people. This was around the time that the don't say gay bill in Florida was picking up steam in the news. And I just had this feeling that the socio-political discourse was about to go back into this space where we're debating the merits of whether or not we should like allow queer people to exist. And I was just exhausted by it before it even got started. Because it's 2022 and we got another one of these pointless anti-gay laws coming through, which means everyone's going to want to have the debate again. And I, I am just so profoundly uninterested in ever having this debate again in any kind of meaningful way. And the reason is you just don't have a good argument and you never have. You really, really don't. And I've heard all of them. I've heard every single one and they are all so flimsy, so embarrassingly bad. The fact that anyone should even entertain them and take them as being even remotely serious is just laughable. So we're not doing it. We're not having the debate. You don't have good arguments. And like, that was true then, they didn't have any good arguments then, and it's still true now. It would have been true if I had posted that video 10 years ago. It would have been true and relevant if I had posted that video 20, 30, 40, or 50 years ago. We've been having the debate publicly for at least that long, and the arguments have not evolved or improved or updated at all in all that time. There are no new arguments. There are no interesting arguments. There are no arguments that are difficult to contend with or that make you stop and think, you know what, that's a good point. Usually the only position that I'm willing to allow these people to hang on to is the argument that it goes against their personal religious beliefs. And the only reason I'm inclined to allow them to hang on to that position is because it's unfalsifiable. If a person tells me that they have a mystical belief in something that no one can provide any evidence for or against, like, that's fine, I guess. Just try your best not to use that belief as an excuse to be a dick or to actively harm a vulnerable group of societally marginalized people. But I do have to say that just because I'm willing to allow conservative Christian people the space to hold certain unfalsifiable personal religious convictions regarding whether or not it's okay to be a queer person does not mean that I think that those 
unfalsifiable personal religious convictions in any way qualify as a good argument. It's not a good argument, it's actually a pretty demonstrably weak one. Based on how much modern Christians make their identity about opposing queerness and queer culture, you would think that their holy book talks about this a lot more than it does and a lot more clearly than it does. You would think that God is constantly talking about how he doesn't want people being gay, how he doesn't want people being trans. With how adamant modern Christians are that queerness goes against the will of their God, you would think that this is just all over their book. It'd be like, and now a reading from Jesus's Sermon on the Mount. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the land. Also, and I know I sound like a broken record here, I'm serious guys, don't be gay. For real. I know I talk about this a lot, but like, nobody be trans or gay, please. Okay? And if anybody's using they, them pronouns, that for sure is out. But it's not the biggest thing that God is concerned about in the Bible. It doesn't even make the top 10. It's just one verse in one book in the Old Testament that, for all we know, is a mistranslation anyway. But this isn't a video where I'm trying to debunk conservative Christians' bad arguments against queerness existing in society. Like I said, we've already been having that debate for decades, and homophobic, transphobic bigots have never been able to provide anything even close to a compelling argument for their case. What I want to talk about is this disingenuous thing that you hear people say all the time, where they say, I'm not homophobic or transphobic. I don't care if people are gay or trans. I don't have a problem with it. I just wish they would stop shoving it down my throat. Or I don't have a problem with gay or trans people. I just don't want my kids seeing this stuff. How the hell does our existence as trans people affect your life? I'm glad you asked because I'm going to explain it to you. See, it never did affect our lives. No one gave a fuck at all. We might have found it kind of weird, but we didn't give a fuck. Until you started shoving it down our throats and forcing it into our children's lives. <laughs> Won't somebody please think of the children? I know that a lot of public figures who speak this way are being knowingly disingenuous when they do it, but I think there are a good amount of like average people who talk this way who genuinely believe what they're saying. They genuinely don't think of themselves as bigots or people who hold any prejudicial views. But it's such a silly thing to say because on its face it's just bullshit. Right? Saying you don't have a problem with a particular community, you just don't like when they're really visible publicly, means that you do have a problem with that community. It's like saying, I'm not racist, I just don't like when I leave my house and I see people who are of a different race than me existing in public. That really bothers me. Which, incidentally, is a thing that conservatives say all the time. I'm not racist, I just really don't like when a black person shows up in a movie I wanted to see. That really makes me irrationally angry. Like, hey, dude, that means that you're racist. Hey everybody, it's me, the Austin that is currently editing this video. You can tell it's a different version of me because I have a different hat on. But I just wanted to pop in here really quick because another thing just occurred to me. I just think that it is such bizarre behavior to say that you don't have a problem with a certain community, but then go around constantly making unsubstantiated claims that that community is full of pedophiles and groomers. Like, first of all, if you are going to make accusations that are that heavy, you had better have some receipts to back that up. Because if you don't, you're just kind of being objectively terrible. But also, it's really weird to say that you don't have a problem with that community if that's what you think of them. That'd be like me saying, I got no beef with the Detroit Lions, I just wish they'd stop trying to murder my mom. Like, if I'm genuinely convinced that the Detroit Lions are trying to murder my mom, then I should have a problem with them. That's all. Okay, uh, back to other Austin with the other hat. But I also hate when people say this because the logic of it is entirely backwards. The internal logic of saying, I'm not homophobic or transphobic, I just hate when queer people are shoving their queerness down my throat, seems to suggest that bigotry or prejudice toward the queer community is the result of 
queer people being proudly visible in public. As though we live in a world where no one ever actually had a problem with queer culture. Heteronormative culture was never trying to systemically push queer culture into the margins of society until queer people had the audacity to be a little more publicly open about who they are. It's all backwards. Bigotry towards the queer community is not a reaction to pride. Pride is a reaction to bigotry towards the queer community. It exists in commemoration of the Stonewall riots. And what happened essentially with Stonewall is you had this oppressive, bigoted, heteronormative power structure that said, you can exist, but you have to exist in the margins of society. You have to exist in your own secret little private clubs. You have to exist out of view of our children. You can't exist in our stories or in our movies or in our culture in any mainstream way. And the queer people of the time said, okay, we'll do that. And they had their own little private clubs and their own little private secret spaces where they could meet and be themselves. And that bigoted, prejudiced, oppressive, heteronormative power structure wound up coming into those private secret spaces that were exclusively for queer people and they said you know what we don't want you to exist here either we don't want you to be safe here either we kind of just don't want you to exist period and the queer people at stonewall said okay you told us to exist in this small secret marginalized space you told us to keep it out of your throats out of your face out of view of your kids and we did that. And now you're telling us that's not good enough. And the boiling point was reached and the natural reaction was, you know what, fuck that, we're coming out. And we're coming out with fists and we're coming out with bricks and we're coming out to be seen publicly in a big, loud, proud way. And that is quite simply just the correct response. That is a completely justifiable response. That is a reasonable response. That is a respectable response. It was never reasonable of white, straight, cisgender culture to expect queer people to exist in a way that catered to their comfort. It wasn't a reasonable expectation in the 1950s, and it's still not a reasonable expectation today. The other thing that saying, I'm totally fine with queer people, I just wish they weren't shoving it down my throat, suggests is that if queer people were to be less loud and proud about it, if there were to be fewer pride flags around the town that you live in, that somehow heteronormative culture and conservative Christian culture would treat these people more fairly and be kinder to them. Essentially, the implication there is if queer people were to just tone it down a bit, then everyone else would treat them better. And that's obviously just bullshit. No, you wouldn't. I'm so tired of this disingenuous line of thinking, this myth that if queer people were just to behave in a way that you deem more reasonable or respectable, that you would treat them more reasonably or respectfully. Like, first of all, even if this would work, it wouldn't, but let's just pretend for the sake of argument that it would, even though it absolutely would not. That's still a really shitty moral philosophy to have. Marginalized people don't need to earn your respect by living their lives in accordance with your personal religious beliefs. That's an incredibly unreasonable standard for offering people basic human dignity and respect. And second of all, anyone saying this who actually thinks it's true is displaying an extraordinary amount of historical ignorance. Conservatives have historically not displayed an ability or even a willingness to treat queer people with dignity and respect regardless of their behavior, regardless of whether they're parading down Main Street in a thong or existing quietly in a private club. You haven't historically given the queer community any reason to believe you when you say, I promise I'll be nicer to you if you just tone down your queerness. Which, again, is a pretty bigoted and bad offer to make anyway. I think conservatives want all gay people to look and sound and behave like Dave Rubin. That, to them, is what a reasonable queer person looks like and sounds like. But the thing is, even if all queer people did look and sound and behave like Dave Rubin, conservative people wouldn't stop trying to eradicate queer people and queer culture from 
mainstream life. Dave Rubin is friends and a frequent collaborator of Michael Knowles. Michael Knowles knows Dave Rubin and frequently works with him and has probably had dinner with him many, many times. And that didn't stop Michael Knowles from getting up in front of a crowd and saying this. There can be no middle way in dealing with transgenderism. It is all or nothing. If it is false, then for the good of society, and especially for the good of the poor people who have fallen prey to this confusion, transgenderism must be eradicated from public life entirely. The whole preposterous ideology. And maybe Dave Rubin thinks that that doesn't include him? Like, oh no, my buddy Mike Knowles there is talking about the eradication of trans people, not the eradication of gay people like me. But like Dave, honey, sweetie, pumpkin. Come on. But I actually think that Dave Rubin is in the inner circle enough and in the know enough to understand that the conservative power structure is not interested in half measures when it comes to the eradication of queerness. He understands that just like his buddy Mike Knowles just said, it's all or nothing. Transgender people may be up first because they're a more vulnerable and easier target to pitch to conservative voters, but there is no world in which conservatives would successfully eradicate trans people from the planet and then stop there. And Dave Rubin definitely knows this. He just most likely feels protected because he's friends with the right people or something, which obviously makes Dave Rubin a particularly evil kind of shitbag. Anyway, this video more or less exists just to say, if you're the kind of person who genuinely believes that you don't have a problem with gay people or bisexual people or pansexual people or trans people, you just wish they'd tone it down, I don't believe you and I'm really over your bullshit respectability politics, frankly. You're not behaving in a respectable or reasonable way. You're actively participating in the systemic societal oppression of an entire class of people. An oppression, by the way, that has been actively going on for a very long time. And you're doing that for no good reason. You don't have any good arguments to justify your disgusting behavior. Even your religion religious text that you use as justification for your hatred and vitriol barely supports your behavior. So, you know, just knock it off, all right? And grow up. Okay, that's the end of the video. Uh, I talk a lot more about this on this week's episode of my podcast, which is a thing that exists. If you didn't know, you know now. You should check it out. There's a link to the video in the description and the audio version in the description. Also, I directed this music video recently for my friend Tiffany Topol, and I'm really proud of it. And I know that doesn't really have anything to do with what we just talked about in this video, but I really want people to go watch it. So if you're watching this and you didn't know that that's a thing that I also do is like I make music videos from time to time. I have a whole playlist on my channel of music videos that I've made and directed, and I'm going to link the most recent video that I directed in this video. So uh, check that out if you would, please. And that's okay. Um, that's the end of the video. Patreon.com slash Austin Archer. If you want to support this channel, yeah, yeah, yep, 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 yep. Idiotic nonsense, feeling like a fountain overflow, with no one knowing the difference between wrong and right, all day and all damn night. I got morons on my left and more on my right.